Hello, this is a full process, description and narration of how I painted a tree frog. This involves using two programs. The first one is a program on the iPad called Infinite Painter and the second one is of course ArtRage. And here we go with the process on Infinite Painter. I just blocked in the background on a single layer first of all and then started overlaying the frog on just a second layer. That's generally the way I start things and the way I move forward most of the time. Just laying in and blocking in all the colours, going through something a bit more extravagant regarding the colours and the frog this time. I like the brushes on Infinite Painter because they are quite painterly and you get a nice painterly effect with them. You can see the brush strokes. And already starting to build the form up. Looks quite flat at the moment, so I'll need to add in a little bit of shading. I do have a habit of doing this at times, making my art quite flat. And there we go, just overlaying some color and some shading, which I typically do with a separate layer set to multiply or overlay and now just adding in extra detail to the background playing around with some textures in Infinite Painter and just trying to work out in my own mind my general idea for this. I think I start to build up an idea now of how I'm going to do this. I very much want to tone down the colour a bit more and draw almost a spotlight on the frog itself because the light is coming from above so I think it will work quite well and I'll need to pull this into Art Ray shortly to be able to start to develop the textures but I've got the basic form here and working on an iPad initially is quite useful because it's nice and portable and certainly Infinite Painter seems to be the best one I've found so far so here we go, I've imported it into Art Rage. I'm set a layer above to multiply and set as you can see the oil brush to be quite thick paint because the thinners are really quite low and then I'm just overlaying some brush strokes on top to give it that painterly effect almost like I've actually done it in Art Rage. that's the general plan for this and let's speed it up a bit now we're just starting to add in the detail the oil brush is still being used at the moment to pull some paint around a little bit and get it to look a bit more art ragey. As you can see I've only got three layers, I typically only use a minimal set of layers. Now what I've done here, I'll just pause it here, is that I have set another layer and I would have set it to multiply and I would have used the gradient fill to be able to just dull down the colours. As I described before, I had an idea of putting a spotlight on the frog and if I just pull back a little bit, you'll be able to see me doing this. Just wanted a spotlight and at the moment the lighting is a bit too um, out there, you can see there. Um, that's when I added it in with the gradient. And now what I'm going to do is using the airbrush I'm going to start to put quite a nice bright colour, possibly white on, which would almost work as a um, mask in a way. Um, Art Rage doesn't have masks, but you can get some similar effect by using some blend layers. So what I'm going to now be doing is using the airbrush to carefully build up the form and get some form of spotlight built on um, my main frog. I always feel that this is quite a good technique for me because as I said I tend to start off my pictures quite flat and this is a really good way because you get a gradation of lighting and then you can start to highlight the main figure and as you can see that's all already starting to get a nice feeling and it just changes the ambience of the painting. You can also do it sometimes, which I do, is by using the Erase tool, but that doesn't always give me quite so much flexibility as actually using the airbrush. 
Here I'm experimenting by the focal point, which will be the eye, and I was just playing around with some blend layers there, usually a color dodge I like to use for the eye, just to really bring that one out. Here I'm playing around with some textures. I have created a layer and set the texture to something, it doesn't really matter at the moment, something I thought would look quite good, and then used a pastel. Um, and with a pastel it tends to pick up the texture a lot better than any other brush. So when I'm brushing it over you can see that the texture is starting to come through and that's picking up the overall grain or whatever texture you've initially set. This is a very powerful feature and I use quite a lot towards the end of a painting just to add in extra detail. Because I'm quite lazy generally, I don't really like to spend hours and hours and hours pulling on different bits of detail. As you can see, I'm toggling on and off here what I've actually added, and I'm quite liking the look of that because it gives the frog a look of more detail and a more realistic kind of skin tone. And of course, it's on a separate layer. You can set any blend layer that you want on it as well. It's just a very quick and easy way for me to add some kind of detail. Typically I would create my own textures by using my camera and then converting it and then using it like that. And at this stage it's probably just a bit of trial and error going on just to see what looks good. And again I'm very much wanting to pull that focus in to the textures of the frog and then onto the eye of the frog. You can see there I'm playing around with some blend layers just to see what looks good. A lot of the time with using pastels and textures you don't necessarily need a blend layer and a normal layer would work absolutely fine because it pushes the textures through a lot better and makes them stand out a lot better. And now I have decided that I just want to pick out the frog as a separate layer because I've merged all the layers now. And to do this, I am using my now preferred method by painting the selection, and then I can cut it out. And it gives me much more flexibility to do what I want with the background layer, and then the foreground. Typically, I would just use two, two main layers for what I want to do. Now I'm experimenting with overlaying of just pictures that I've taken using my camera. As you can see, that is just a picture of a log, which I took at home and I'm just gently overlaying it, playing around with some blend layers and just seeing what happens because I want to build up a texture. I want to build up a bit of a texture on the background and the actual the actual leaf that it's on. So I'm just again this is a bit of experimentation which I typically do quite a lot of time around this point of painting just to bring some detail out and now I'm just tweaking things tidying things up a little bit still want to do something to that eye I'm still not quite happy with the detail of it yet because that is as I said the focal point again now playing around it's really coming together now just a case of getting the balance right so that I can get the balance in between the frog and the background. And here, uh, as you can see, I've now switched to the sticker spray, which enables me to overlay some of my created brushes. You can see on the left-hand side that I've actually got my brushes loaded in, which I've created over the years. And I would have set that layer to overlay, and I'm just playing around again we're seeing what works because I just wanted to bring a little bit more light in to from one side just to emphasize things and again a bit more experimentation by using a stencil filling things in seeing what works because I was I, was, I wanted to add more detail to that eye so I thought I would cheat with a, a gradation and then overlay it and what I'm doing here is I'm playing around with some blend levels just to seeing what works and what doesn't work. I really wanted to bring the focal point onto that. I'm kind of liking the look of this. It doesn't quite fit in at the moment. And I'm just kind of adding in a color dodge 
layer to bring it out with a, a highlight of color and it's just getting the balance right with playing around and of course this is a brilliant sort of digital art you can do a lot of this and as you can see there I wasn't quite happy with the lighting it didn't stand out and it didn't look natural so I just filled in the bottom with a multiply layer with an airbrush just to show the form of the eye which now sits into the picture a lot better and flipped a couple of times just to make sure that it looks okay just giving a slightly different perspective on things so playing around with the eye a little bit but I think it's just about there and now I just am um, overlaying more brush strokes over the top because I wasn't quite happy that it was looking painterly enough for my liking just to add in that extra level of detail to make things pop a little bit more just tweaking the colors getting the the lighting just to sit better it's all the final touches really on something like this because I'm pretty sure I've just about got there now so it's really just finalizing things making sure that everything sits in pretty well and try and that was a bit of experimentation by just using the palette knife and set it to more of a, a wet blend and trying to bring the focal point even more to the frog if I possibly can do this is experimentation to see whether it works or not flipping quite a lot just to make sure that it does actually work and you see there that I um, it suddenly switched slightly with the colors and that's due to the fact that I use a tool called GIMP to apply filters for the final finishing touches and this is what I use as Art Rage doesn't have a particularly good set of filters on it has very rudimentary ones it doesn't really matter because I use a different tool to be able to apply filters so I export this painting as a PSD format or a lot of the time just a simple image and then what I can do is I can then import it into GIMP, fiddle around with it and then export and import back into ArtRage and this is exactly what I've done here so I've tweaked all the colors very slightly just for the absolute final finishing touches and just just getting the lighting just to sit in very small amount just a little bit better and that's it that is my tree frog and that's my process for creating that. Thank you for watching.